to the 15% and the 5% you're promoting and all this other stuff. So you got to watch what you're doing with all these sales. It's the cost of doing business. If you're not raising your prices to cover the promotions and all this other stuff, it's an expense. It's advertising. It's just like putting a billboard on the road. You're just doing it in eBay. Welcome to Ask Some Postcards. In this video, I got a few things to go over. I got 10 cards that sold, and I walk through. One's an embroidered Cinerita from Spain. I'll show you what that one sold for. Then I got the special topic, Gettysburg postcards, the battlefields. There's a lot of postcards of those out there. Get a lot of questions about them. They do sell, but there, there's a lot of touristy cards, just like Winsburg and St. Augustine and stuff like that. So we're going to go through and do a deep dive on those cards. Then after that, I put a poll out on Saturdays. And this one was, do you use eBay coupons? Just another added fee. If you really look at it, if you give someone a 20% discount or 10%, that just adds on to your promoted and stuff like that. So I, I, I grabbed some help files from eBay and I'll discuss my opinion about it. Then at the end I got some viewer comments. It's about tax time. I'm not a tax person. Don't take my advice. You need to talk to a CPA. I, I, but I'll give you my opinion what I do on some of the taxes and stuff that coming up. But let's go ahead and get into what's sold. Ten cards. Go real quick. And what this does, it just shows you with a larger store what sells. I got a bunch of variety, bunch of quantity, and just what sells. The first one was a USS Tulsa PG-22. That's the ship. Look, it's an older one. It's got the sailing mast. So this is probably early 1900s or so. I'm not sure what year it is. But this is a semi-gloss front, matte back, print that the club did, and that sold for $4.75. Next one sold for $5.99, a Hawaiian beauty. This is Island Beauty is what they call it. Vertical card up and down. Berlin, Hawaii. Sold for $5.99. Next one, there was a lot of these cards out there. It's a really neat card. Sold for $7.65. It's the hook and ladder truck of a fire department. Fire departments always do well, but there's a lot of reproductions and stuff out there. This was posted in 1908, divided back, and that sold for $7.65. This is just a road. Spruce Knob. I guess a knob is a hill. We don't have hills or mountains in Illinois. It's all flatlands. Just a view card of a road. $4.75. Next one is a motel. Most of motels I start at $5.75, always a dollar up. Some I don't, just to bring people in. This is one that sold for $4.75. Air Park Motel in Mexico, Missouri. Nice looking card, little multi-view. TV's not on. There's a thing about TV on at Popeye. John, Popeye's postcards told me about, if the TV's on, people actually collect those in our hotel room. And I did a video about TV on postcards, so you want to check that out. And there's a trifecta. If you got the hotel, the sign, the room, there's three things he said that did that. So I did a video on that. Does it give you a little bit more? Eh, it's some novelty thing, maybe a dollar more or so. But always put TV on in there. People look at that. But check out that video. It's pretty interesting. The different flavors and things. That sold for $4.75. This is the USS Ulysses S. Grant. SSBN31. So SSBN means it's a submarine. It's got a nice cachet. It's a first, it's a naval cover. Nice cachet on there. Someone bought that for $4.75. Next one sold for $5.08. Probably sent an offer. This is going a milking in Mansfield, Ohio, I think it's is what it is. A guy carrying a lady with a bucket. They're going milking. If the ink is kind of raised on looks like they used the ink to draw that on there after the card was made. It's not embossed, but it was posted in 1909. And that sold for 508. Next person bought two cards. I did a video about expos. I'm not an expert on expos. I did the best I could. But I'm learning more. These actually sold for 
1150 and this is the Louisiana Purchase Exposition St. Louis 1904 in that video I break down all the ones I found and the salty rates and stuff like that and got some pretty good feedback on it a lot of people specialize in them told me about some other things so you want to check out the comments and videos too from other people that know more about these cards but the two cards Louisiana 1904 Exposition St. Louis they're undivided back since it's before 1907 and they sold for 1150 I think I maybe have five cents in these cards then the last one that was over this sold for 697 I probably had a offer on it these are the embroidered cards and I think this is from Madrid Spain they're embroidered and got some beads on there I've had these before they're like a two-ply card because they hide the sewing so people can write kind of a thicker card but that's the Senorita and it sold for $6.97 probably sent a, I sent an offer for it but I had a bunch of these I mean I bought a big lot of them I didn't think the sell through rate on embroider cards didn't you think these would sell for more they, I just haven't been able to move them for a good price but there's a lot of them out there I had the bullfighters I think I sold them in whatnot to get rid of them because I had them for so long and stuff I sold them in a lot there went for okay money got my money back plus a little extra but the embroidered cards but I ended up with 10 cards my goal for 2024 I'll get it straight in this video the other ones had a little overlap from last year to this year but now since we're into the year more so I want to do 16 cards a day $80 a day raise my ASP and be very picky about sourcing don't spend a lot this year except on good things so I'm eight down from my goal I'm about $22 down, $21 down from my $80, but my ASP did go up. So I didn't work as hard, made a little bit more profit, but it was a slower day. I think the other day I did a hundred some dollars, had some Ko-Fi stuff. Today I didn't have any Ko-Fi stuff. You're going to have days like that. Doesn't mean I'm going to go out there and knee jerk and say eBay's failing, put some promotions on, do this, change this, just because I had one day where I only sold 10 cards. I've had three card dates. I look at it throughout the month. I hear a lot of people say, well, I'm going to put this up for three days, and if it doesn't do anything, I'm going to pull it down. That's not enough time. The people are not on eBay every day like we are as sellers. They go in there when they have leisure time, and a lot of times weekends. It's stuff You can speculate on all that stuff. But knee-jerk reaction chasing hills and valleys is not a good way to run a business. It, you need to... Well, I work it out for the end of the month, then I divvy the money out, three months, six months, nine months, a year. I look at trends. Is it a side trend, uptrend, downtrend? Where am I going? doesn't mean I'm going to go in and change my minimum price. It's just that I'm going to have to cut back on level of expenses if I'm not, not selling enough cards to cover that. But most of the time in day two, day three of the month, all my monthly expenses are paid because I paid so little for the cards and I have such a low overhead. I cut it down to almost nothing and I did that it took over a year to get everything down to where I, I don't worry about making the bill I'm not waiting till the last day of the month to get my money back now if I did a $500 day doesn't mean I take that money and go out and spend it on myself I put it in the account the bank account and I just leave it there for days that are lower if I have a string of 10 car days I know I got money in the bank the you know, pay a year's worth of bills or whatever. I always have an emergency fund. Say my computer dies or my thermal printer. I have backups on those things. And I have enough computers to keep me going. But say I wanted my monitor or my TV broke. All that stuff I have emergency funds for. Or if I find a real good deal on a lot of cards and say they want $2,000 for it, I have money for that. I've stocked it away over the years. So I'm not racing around. Now, if someone comes in and says, they got, you know, 10,000 cards for $10,000 or whatever. No, I, I would have to dip into some other things to get that money. But I have enough to run my business and get the extra and jump on deals when I can. But the, they, they come whatever. And sometimes I turn them away because I just don't want to spend the money or the stock. But now we're going to get into the special topic. Every time I do these videos, I, I try to pick a postcard. I don't really get into that much myself. I'm getting into the cards that I know about them. But I never really did a deep dive. So this year is like a really big learning experience for me. 
on postcards, and one of them was Gettysburg. I sold them. I get them all the time, but I didn't know a lot about Gettysburg. I know it's colonial, it's out east, battleground, Civil War, Revolution War, whatever, but I never really got into the historic part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some talk a little bit about Gettysburg. Got a couple neat facts I found on Gettysburg, and while I do that, I'm going to show you some postcards I found for sale out on eBay and different places and show you some of those. Here we go. Gettysburg is a town in Pennsylvania that became famous during the American Civil War in the 1860s. In July 1863, a big and important battle took place there, known as the Battle of Gettysburg. The, this battle was a turning point in the Civil War. The northern states called the Union, and the southern states, known as the Confederacy, were fighting over important issues like slavery and state rights. The battles of the Battle of Gettysburg lasted three days and was very bloody, with thousands of soldiers losing their lives. In the end, the Union won the battle, and it was a major victory for them. The Battle of Gettysburg was a significant moment in American history because it stopped the Confederacy from advancing further in the Northern Territory. President Abraham Lincoln later gave a famous speech called the Gettysburg Address. Now, that, I probably know more about that than the battle where he honored the soldiers who had died there and reminded the nation of the importance of freedom, equality for all. Today, the Gettysburg National Military Park preserves the battlefield. People can visit it to learn about the crucial event in our country's past. It's a reminder to the sacrifices made during the Civil War and the ongoing struggles for a united and just nation. In addition to its historical importance, Gettysburg is also known for its beautiful countryside and historic sites. The town has museums and monuments dedicated to the Civil War, making it a popular destination for people interested in American history. Whether you're a history buff or just curious about the past, Gettysburg is a place where you can explore, learn, reflect on the events that shaped our nation more than 150 years ago. Now I got two facts here that I thought were interesting. I love time capsules. I always search out those videos on YouTube and stuff like that when they open stuff that's been put away for a hundred years and they open it up. There's some really fascinating ones out there and what they pull out of these things. So the time capsule and a cannonball. Fact one. In 1959, during the routine maintenance of a Civil War cannonball in Gettysburg, workers discovered something unexpected. Inside the cannonball was a time capsule containing a strange assortment of items, including a mini whiskey bottle, a piece of cloth from the Confederate General Lee's coat, and a lock of hair believed to be from Abraham Lincoln. The purpose of this bizarre time capsule still remains a mystery. So, time capsules are just cool. Fact number two. The mystery, mysterious case of the van vanishing cyclorama what I took a quick look at what a cyclorama is, like a barn or it's a round thing with all, all these pictures on it and back in the day and you went around and seen all this stuff. So cyclorama is something you want to Google out there, search and you can get more information. But Gettysburg was once home to an enormous cyclorama painting depicting the Battle of Gettysburg, measuring 377 feet in circumference. It was housed in a massive circular building, however, in the early 20th century, the painting mysteriously disappeared. It wasn't, wasn't until 2008 that a portion of it was discovered in a barn in Texas, from Pennsylvania to Texas. The whereabouts of the rest of the cyclorama remained unknown, making it one of, of the arts world, art world's great unsolved mysteries. So cyclorama, when I went out and looked, I tried to find a little bit more information on this. I, I started going down a rabbit hole and I had to stop. But it looks like it's, it was kind of like the IMAX theater of today is where they went in and told stories about the big long portraits and stuff, panoramic things. But that's a little bit about Gettysburg. There's so much out there. You can dive deep into it. There's shows about it, documentaries. It, it was a bloody battle. It, more I got into it and stuff, it was crazy. I found a lot more information than what I told you, but it, this should pique your curiosity to look at Gettysburg postcards maybe a little different than you had. But I know they're touristy cards. But do they sell? Now, what I feel and what really happens, data-driven decisions is what I like. I want something to back up what I think. 
I, if I'm thinking one thing and the data tells me another thing, I'm going with the data. That's just me. Ones and zeros, no in between. The data, a lot of people are afraid of their data, their numbers. Like on YouTube, they're afraid to go look at their analytics because what's really happening can be frightening to them. Or it can be exhilarating. It's better than you thought. And so you got to look at your numbers and then take what you feel and then you got to make a decision. So data-driven decisions have a better chance of succeeding than just what you think. What you think and you know are two different things. What you think isn't how you run a business. You run it by data. If you're not grabbing your numbers every, at least every month or every quarter to see how you're doing, how, how do you know? Just because you got a pocket full of money doesn't mean all that money's yours. Are you paying too much out in fees? Are you way over on inventory? What are your expenses? You got your subscriptions. Last year I did cost cutting. Hugely cost cut. I went through all my expenses. I just keep going and kept going and cutting. Can I do without? Yes, 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 no, yes. And I looked at it. Is it beneficial and stuff? There's some things you just can't do without. You need you need envelopes. If you sell postcards, you need labels for your thermal printer or whatever. You need envelopes. If you sell 300 cards average a month, you need to have you know 450 envelopes one and a half times because you could have a run some months you go down and knock that but people get down to the last envelope then they complain that Amazon's not shipping fast enough well you gotta have a little bit of stock that that's your meat and potatoes of your business is envelopes we, you gotta have a back stock of that stuff and the labels tape boxes packing material that, that's all what makes us work those you should have a power inventory is what I recommend of everything. So when I get down to a certain level on stuff, I order more. Even though I might not use it for a month, I have enough so I don't have to worry about it. But sell-through rate is a way that I look and just see how many cards are moving through eBay on a snapshot. Just a quick 90-day snapshot of what's in eBay. I go ahead and I take this little chart here in my head. The red is low. They, the sell-through rate is low. doesn't mean they won't sell, but they don't have as good of a chance to sell as the average high or very high. I always work in the high and average, so 4 to 10% card sell rates is where I work. While I'm there, I do pick up some duds and reds that I think they're a cool card, but then they're not. Or I pick up some really high ones, real good, real photo postcards or cards that people really want are falling in at 11 plus Disney, mermaids, and stuff like that. So I keep this little range in my head. I just want to find out is it in the green or the red or the high. So I went out there and I take Postcard Gettysburg and I look for the sold. I click sold, it hits completed. It's not scientific. It's not down to the last card. I'm, that's not going to help you. There's so many cards out there. You just want to parse out some of the things that pop up. There's plaques, there's coins. Get rid of some of that stuff in your search and then get see if it falls in the range. That's why I use ranges. I got 710 sold. Then I unclicked the sold and completed and I got 13,000 listed felt a little low, but I did it a few times, and eBay search can be a little finicky sometimes. Postcard Gettysburg gets you in the ballpark, it was 5%. You times it by 100, and you round up or down on the percent, and you get 5%. That falls into the middle of the average, basically, an average card. Now, to, for me to make sure that's the, you know, close in the range I want to be, I always bump it up against a couple other things. So I went out there and I did postcard Richmond, Virginia. 7%. A little higher. And then you got postcard Gettysburg at 5%. Then I took another colonial town, Philadelphia. A big city. Let's see where that falls. With 47,000 cards out there. So a little higher listing thing. 4% sell through rate. That means, you know, 4% is average. They're all in the average area. And then the postcard Valley Forge which is another George Washington, Colonial, Civil War, Revolutionary War, 3%. So I don't think 5% is too far off, so it's average to me. So when I see Gettysburg, it's an average card. But you always have those outliers. The real photo postcards, the artist sign, all these different things, those sell themselves. I'm talking about average cards. Throughout your high, throughout your low, cards your 99 cent stuff and what's really happening and we're going to get into the pricing here but sell through rate on Gettysburg is average so if you get a box of colonial cards and a lot of them are Gettysburg don't pay the top dollar for them 
their average. You can still sell them, and they probably will still sell, but they're going to be longer tail because they're average and there's a lot out there. But when I go through the pricing, now South Rate isn't pricing, promoted listings, whatever. It, you never know all the variables for that. It just shows the number of cards. So I know it's an average card there. Now let's go take a look at pricing. I always look for extreme pricing first. What's the high watermark? I threw out the $15,000 ones, of, you know, the graded ones, and I throw out all the low stuff, like $0.99 cent auctions, $1.99 lots. I look for individual cards, and I try to come up with a watermark that says, what's the highest these things have sold in the last, that I can find? I can go and people will comp cards, or look and say they get this card here, and they, they want to get $10, $12 for it. They will continue to look through everything, Google and stuff, till they find their price. They will find their price on that. So they will keep searching until they are satisfied with a price that they think. They won't look at the market. They'll, they'll keep going. So a lot of people ask me, what do you think this card's worth? I, I, I don't do the, you know, antique roadshow. People ask me prices of cards. I look at it. And they might think this card's a $20 card. I might, it's a linen card, and it's of St. Mary's College, $4 to $7 is where I would start around there. And, but I'll never give them the number they want. Even if I told them that, they're still going to go out there and look for the $20 comp. They're going to find that one comp that sold that one person at one time, and they're going to use that, and then they complain their cards don't sell. You got to kind of, Average it out. You gotta kind of look at the whole market. I mean, this is in Mississippi, Winona, Mississippi. So search on Winona, Mississippi. Not just the college. Is there other things in Winona? But I know that's an average card. I'm not gonna go down a big rabbit hole for that card. It's gonna be between four and seven dollars is where I'll put it up, unless there's something that pops up right away. But I went out there and I found three cards that were higher. One of them's a lot on here. But three cards that were at the highest the extreme for Gettysburg. Two of them are Real Photo Postcards, and then there's a lot of 21. But the first one here is Real Photo Postcard of Tourist Civil War Battlefield. It's a General Buford, Buford, Buford monument, Gettysburg postcard. So there's tourists there in a car looking at a monument, a Real Photo. That's a really neat card. It's got monuments, it's got people standing there, it's got an older car. A lot of stuff going on, and it's a real photo. $45. So, right there, it gives you $45. Then you got another one here Antique Real Photo of Gettysburg Monuments, photograph from Road. Is that the same monuments or whatever? But another $45. So, that gives you, you know, $40, $40, $50 for a nice real photo postcard. That bottom one isn't as good as the top one. I think the top one might have got a few more dollars if they threw it in an auction or maybe not. But they probably got what they wanted. Then I found this one in Worth Point. It's a collection of 21 real photo postcards and an album that looks like they're not glued in because they got the little tabs in the sides. And they're real photo postcards is what they state. I don't have them in my hand. $850 sold in 2018. So if I take $850, 850 divided by 21, they got $40 a piece for those cards in that album. So real photo postcards is the top watermark and they're between $40 and $50 is where these are falling. Now the first two sold in 2022 and 20, or 2023, the album sold in 2018. So you got to take that in consideration too. What is the market today, you know, six years ago? compared to today. But I would say between $40 and $50 is where I would have in my mind if I had a real photo of Gettysburg that looked like these cards. But get back down to earth, the average cards in the green, 4 to 10%. What do I see out there? This is just quick snapshots. I'm not spending a lot of time because I'm just trying to get into a range to know what uh, price bucket they fall in. This one I found, this is a Gettysburg, the wheat field from Little Round Top Civil War Mon postcard, $15. It has a writing tab on it, could be a undivided back or divided back there, it looks like, but $15. Far cry from $50. 
Then you got the Gettysburg, Pennsylvania Robert E. Lee staff on horses. Confederacy stuff goes pretty well. Just be careful with that Confederate flag, the war flag, and stuff like that. eBay has taken those down. So just be careful when you're looking at them. Don't, you can put them up, but I don't ride that edge if I see them. I have people that take those for me. But this one sold for $12. So $12, $15 is what they're, the, the high watermark of average cards. Not saying every card's going to sell that, and a few might sell a little bit more. And then you got the Pennsylvania Gettysburg Tuck. This was a Raphael Tux. Did a video on Tux. It's a publisher, and they have a lot of cards. Some do well, some. Uh, they're okay to me. Baltimore Street, 1900 postcard. $12. So if you look there, I just did it real quick. Three cards, average. $12, $15. Real photos, sell themselves and stuff, looking $40, $50. If they're a good real photo, good condition and stuff like that, it could be even more. So that, that's a different niche than what I do is the average. So I know if I go see a box of Gettysburg and there's some cards like this in here now, I could get up to $15 for them, but I'm not going to pay $7 a card to double my money. I'm still going to pay the average price for a Gettysburg box. Unless it has a lot of real photos in there and stuff like that, you make your decisions when you look through them. But that's how pricing and sell-through rate, they're totally different to me. It's average on sell-through rate, and the average price, $15 for average cards, a little higher, but you got to pick and choose. You've got to do your homework, just like St. Augustine, Williamsburg, Penn, Philadelphia. you got to do your homework on some of them. To get that extra dollar but I wouldn't spend a lot of time on them unless there's something that really catches your eye I would just move through them and don't pay a lot for them that's Gettysburg has anybody got any good Gettysburg cards or war Civil War cards they've sold I've seen some really good real photos out there that people have sold over time if it is I do that I'm trying to build up the show and tell feature I got three four things in my bucket now that people have sent me you can send it to me at contact at smpostcards.com and I'll look through it and see if it's something I can share with everybody not just what I do what are you guys doing you know if you sold that $500 card let us know rub it in our faces hey I got this I only paid a nickel for it those are the wins that I want you to celebrate with us so we know there's stuff out there that the hunt is the funnest part of everything but even if you have a lot of cards, you have a Gettysburg collection, how do you store your postcards? You know, what's your setup? Have you done something neat in the last year to set up your stuff? So people can look and see not just what I do, but what everybody does. Just send it in. But that's Gettysburg. We do. Now we're going to get into a poll. These were interesting because I went through and I did a, a bunch of these little things about eBay features that you can use. eBay has a lot of things that you can do. Doesn't mean you have to use them. Doesn't mean they all work for your niche or your model. I've said it before, just because a bucket can hold five gallons of water doesn't mean you need to fill it with five gallons of water. I can carry two gallons, three gallons of water in a five gallon bucket. Just because it's there doesn't mean you need to use it. Just because someone else uses it doesn't mean you use it. You never know the whole story. This question on the poll that come out every Saturday on different ones, do you use eBay coupons? 33% said yes, 65% said no, 3% said other. Me, I have a few out there. I have that eBay newsletter. It goes out Wednesday and Sundays. I put a 10% coupon code in there. Been out there for a long time, a couple years, or I don't know how long I've been sending that thing and put it in there, that coupon code. I just keep extending the date. You want to know how many times it was used? Two. You're talking two, three years, maybe more. Two times. I went out and I did a test. I took and I put a little, I put my stamp on the back and I printed out a little coupon code. It said coupon. And I put that on 300 envelopes that I sent out. Right there, right on the back of the envelope that I mailed out. I don't know how many were sent back. It's still out there, I'm waiting for someone to use it. Zero. I put a coupon code inside the envelope for 300 postcards. You want to know how many were used? Zero. I've, the biggest one is when I talk, I do a talk every once in a while, 
with the uh, postcard club and they have a standing coupon for anybody a member of that group for a certain amount off that's the biggest one but that's a targeted audience that i did a lot of people use the coupons that pop up in their store and give them 10 off out of all my coupons codes that i got out there i looked at it four four people used the coupons that's it all the time i put into it and all understanding it and put it out there four people so to me i don't spend a lot of time with it because right there tells me if i spend a lot of time trying to get that up there it's not worth it i work on other things it doesn't work for my model now remember when you put a say let's say 10 percent coupon and you send it out that's 10 percent someone can get off your item and they talk about stackable here in a second and then you got eBay fees, let's say 15% for a matter of discussion. Could be more or less 15%. That's 25%. And then you promote 5%. 30%. You got all that in there. And then what if you do this and you do this and you did this? You could be up in the 30, 40% of your sale. That's usually a margin for a reseller. So you got to be careful when you're sending sales offers and all this stuff out and all that. What, stack it on top of each other, the 15 20% that eBay charges and see what you're giving away. Some people give a lot away just to get a ka-ching and it brings it totally brings it right off the bottom line. That's an expense. People say, well I only spent a dollar for this thing. That's fine, but don't think you spent a dollar for it. What is the market value of these things and why if you can't sell your item organically without all these little tools can you weather stuff? Can you weather a, a, a low time, a hot, you know, stuff like that? Are you looking at your expenses? It, people jump in and slow weekend, throw sales on. They're giving the house away. Let it ride. When you listed it new, you expected a certain amount of money. And after a while, you want to move your inventory. That's fine. My postcards, they just sit. I've got postcards from 2019 up there. They, they're not taking, they're paid for, they're just sitting there. Not worried about it because I, I got less than a nickel in those cards. Some of the higher price cards I keep an eye on because I want to get return my money back a little bit, but penny cards I'm not that worried about. But I went out to eBay. I said, what is their advice about coupons? And I went to, you can go into eBay and you can go to help and you can put coupon in there. You can put eBay standard envelope. It'll give you some information about what it is. But they come up and said, here are some benefits of using coupons send a printed coupon in your order to encourage repeat purchases i did that zero offer a discount to customers instead of adjusting the item price so you can instead of a sale you throw a coupon i've done that too control your spend on promotions and protect selling your selling your margins with options like minimum spend exp expiry date and budget there's little tweaks you can do to a coupon code, one-time use, amount, and stuff like that, so you don't give the house away, and stuff like that. So those are some of the benefits they provide in the help files. They also say you can stack coupons with markdowns and shipping discounts. So if you got 10% of markdowns, 10% shipping downs, and then a 10% coupon, there's 30% right there before you get to the 15% and the 5% you're promoting. And all this other stuff. So you got to watch what you're doing with all these sales. It's the cost of doing business. If you're not raising your prices to cover the promotions and all this other stuff, it's an expense. It's advertising. It's just like putting a billboard on the road. You're just doing it in eBay. You would expense that billboard. Why are you not adjusting your prices for promoted listings? People are giving away a lot of money. However, coupons are not stackable with other promotions such as order discount and volume pricing. I use volume pricing. So if you buy two cards, three cards, I think after four cards you get 15% off. So multiple things. I've had that forever. Works fine, no problems. But you can't stack coupons with it. It can get confusing when people try to use coupons and it won't let you do this and stuff like that. So I, that's why I don't fill the bucket up with five gallons of water. Because it, it can get stackable and can get crazy if you don't understand it. In several promo and they also say in several promotions are running concurrently on item, your buyers will get the best discount. If an item has a best offer or offer to buyers, 
the offer takes priority and the coupons cannot be applied. Explain that to a customer. So I kind of stay away from coupons. I put them in the newsletter. I have a, it's an easy way to give like the club some things, but I, I don't make it a part of my business really. I'm not that concerned about the coupon. People don't know how to put it in there. It, it just gets a little ministerially crazy once in a while. But do you use coupons? Are you satisfied with them? Maybe clothing or something like that. But for my model, it's if I put a list of priorities and things I want to do, coupons would be way at the bottom. I don't. I just look at the dates, make sure they don't expire, so someone doesn't come back and say the guy got a code that doesn't work. I'll put it in stuff in there. But if you send a 10% coupon, is that really worth it? I would do. I would like to do 30%, because 10% is sales tax. Let me know what you think. But these polls go out every Saturday. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon. And I think there's in a corner here. Subscribing to the channel is the easiest free thing you can do to support us. So just click uh, subscribe and you'll be notified when stuff comes out. But every Saturday I put these out. If you have any questions that you would like me to put out as a poll, not just what I do I'm, in 2024, I'm trying to fill up the polls with what the questions other people got. As long as it's not too personal or detailed, like what is your daily sales numbers and you know, stuff like that. Just high level, if you're looking to change something in your business and you want to poll people, use me. Send, send it to me and I'll try to slide it in there. I think I got them, I got them out to the June now, but I can always slide some in if you really want a question. So contact us on postcards.com. Thanks everybody for participating and continue to participating in participating in these polls. I can't talk this morning. Now we're going to get into viewer comments. I just pull these randomly. I'm not dishing anybody. I, it's just whatever comes in and I look through and catches my eye and pull out. I wish I could put everybody's comments, but if you want to see them, they're in YouTube under the video comments. A lot of people have good information there. If you guys can answer questions for other people, go right ahead. If you get into a conversation and stuff, I usually leave the comments all in there unless it gets political or something like that. I have rules that take all that stuff out because that's not what the channel's about. They can discuss that in another channel. So one of the questions here, how do you reduce your taxes? It gets in a gray area. I'm not a tax person. Don't take this as advice, tax advice. Uh, talk to a certified public accountant, CPA, or your bookkeeper and work with them. Make your decisions off them, not me. I'm just going to tell you my opinion. I'm not a tax person. Some sellers say they buy a lot of stuff at the end of, the, I say end of year, etc. Any tips? So the first thing with taxes, we all got to pay it. It's just part of business. You got to figure it into your profit and loss. Don't think you can get away from it. It's going to come out, the 1099s and stuff like that. But you want to reduce your footprint on taxes. Best thing I can say is, Certified public accountant. They know the rules. They're up on it every year as things change. I have a CPA. I give her 15, 10, 15 numbers a year and all and with our personal stuff and she does it all for me and I, we get a refund or whatever it is. Being retired, it's not as hard as it was before. I don't have a real long investment thing. I got things that come in that we have to wait until February, but as of right now, I think we filed in the middle of February or in February. So we're done every year as soon as possible. Just get it out of the way. But the biggest thing you can do is get a CPA. Yeah, you're going to pay for it, but you need to plan for that. And this, those are tax deductible too, those charges. But the best thing you do is there's two different ways I see taxes. There's end of year filing with a CPA or do it your own, whatever. And then there's bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, I feel, is my responsibility. I'm not going to pay someone for my little business here selling postcards to do my bookkeeping when I have like 10 expenses a month. It, it's not that difficult to have a spreadsheet or write down a ledger or whatever, whatever you spend. So your CPA is probably not going to do your bookkeeping. You're not going to walk into a CPA office with a shoebox full of receipts and they're not going to do it probably. They're not going to go through that because they can spend their time doing other things. That to me is my responsibility. But bookkeeping, if you keep track of all your expenses, mileage, what you pay, not just what you pay for inventory. And people say, oh, I need receipts. Well, if you go to a if I go to a garage sale and I spend five bucks for some postcards, no, <laughs> sue me. I'm not going to have them fill out a receipt and say I have all this. They're not going to come in and look at that receipt. I've never seen that, never have, but 
take it what you can you can do what you want but I'm not going to chase that down now say I go out to Amazon and I buy a scanner oh definitely that's a you know three hundred four hundred dollar expense I have an invoice I have a, a charge the Amazon and all that stuff yeah I'll keep that stuff but a five dollar charge people jump up and down about I'm going to jail because of that? no it's not going to happen black helicopters are not flying around for five dollars but some sellers say they buy a lot of stuff at the end of the year I'm not a fan of that I just don't see so say you go out and you buy five hundred dollars worth of shipping supplies at the end of the year reduce your taxes I think the self-employment tax in 2023 was 15.3 percent so let's say for discussion purposes 15 percent is what you're going to pay on per hundred per, you know on your taxes for self-employment so every hundred dollars you spend you're going to save fifteen dollars on your taxes so you just spent five hundred dollars for all those shipping supplies of your liquid cash the most important thing in your business or you put it on a credit card or whatever and pay 15 20 percent interest is that that that's just not smart to me so for five hundred dollars you're going to save seventy five dollars of that fifteen percent that five hundred dollars comes off your bottom line and you're only tax 15 percent you're going to save 75 dollars not 500. so if i went out and bought this stamp for a hundred dollars Sure, I can expense a stamp. I use it for my business. Normal customer charge for my business. When it comes tax time, this stamp, I, I save $15 on taxes. I only paid $85 for this. So basically, I bought this as a discount. This is how I see it. A lot of people buy a lot of big things at the end of the year. Some equipment and stuff like that. But they never implement it. They're just doing it to get off taxes. Spending their liquid cash to do that, I would rather pay the $75 and keep... The 400 some dollars in my pocket that that's how i view it so but taxes are all a year-long thing with there every month i go through and i have all my expense and my paperwork done i scan it in with my scanner and i have it in here and i keep that and i have a tax document i update that and i true it up every quarter so basically four times a year i make sure i'm good so at the end of the year i'm just waiting for december to get done and i'm good you get your 1099s that come in from ebay paypal whatever when you do your sales say your 1099s equal fifty thousand dollars they've already sent a copy of that to irs and you file and you say you only did thirty thousand dollars the irs is going to send you a letter and say hey did you make a mistake or whatever because they got fifty thousand dollars is what they know of so you need to be true to your stuff. My CPA, I give her all my 1099s. I give her like 10 numbers. I give her a list of expenses to me. So, cause she's got to sign off on it. And she want, basically she's looking to see if she can amortize anything. Like my trailer I had for the flea market. The business bought that. We amortize that over a certain amount of time. So we get a little bit every year. Was it a big savings? No. But usually being retired and stuff like that, we don't get what I used to get uh, when I was working all the time. But it's, it's not hard to keep track of sales, expenses, and profit. That's really what it is. Um, IRS is going to come in and say, hey, I want to see your August stuff. Some people get audited because they play with their numbers. I've, been, I've had businesses and stuff that I did a lot more money. I was one of the biggest caterers in the county here. I had payroll done by people and stuff. We never got audited. But there's a chance. But just be straightforward. And don't hide anything or stuff like that. And so that's the tax stuff. Again, I'm not a tax person. Talk to your CPA. This, that's just my opinions, what I think of it. Best thing is to do is track your monthly expenses. Keep Be diligent about that. Doesn't mean you have to sit down every day. Just have a place that you put all your receipts and at the end of the month keep it up. Don't wait till the end of the year. You're, you're going to miss stuff that you can save. Next one is not going to lie. WorthPoint just made me some nice money. There was a card I was listing that was only showing a single item sold on eBay for around 120 bucks. It was an it was an old enough that it didn't have the image shown where I could tell if it was the same card. I did the free WorthPoint trial, which I have a link down in the video description. You can do I think it's. 10 days or seven lookups because what WorthPoint does if you don't buy it they don't they'll show you the listing but they don't show you what the dollars are until you pay for it but with a free trial you can do that <clears throat> so go ahead and check that little link we do get a cut 
the channel gets a small percentage, no cost to you. It's called an affiliate link. If you go through that link to do that, I don't even know what we get, but it's it's a small percentage of the uh, commission on there just to put the link there and it's an affiliate, but there's no cost to you for that. Not a big, not real big, I can tell you that. I did the free WorthPoint trial search and there was, and there was with the photo still showing. Listed the card for $150 and it sold within an hour. I just paid a, a dollar for it at the I-76 Antique Mall a few weeks ago. You've been there, I recall. I can, is that the one in Ravana, Ohio? Maybe I was there from a prior video. That might convince me to register for at some point once my inventory gets a large enough resource. Yeah, it's about, what, $28 a month? For worth point, I'd, I'd have to look at my expenses, but I pay it every month. I do the monthly because I've turned it off before. I might pay the yearly to save a little bit, but I like the option to turn it on and off. So, say something happens, I want to turn that one off. I, I can't. I've been very picky about my expenses in the last year because I want to keep it reduced. Even though I'm paying a little bit every month, I have that option to turn that off. And I'm not using my liquid cash to pay something for a year when I can cash flow it out for a whole year, if you get what I'm saying. So I can spend $250 to pay for a year now and take $250 of my account. Or as I sell, I can just pay a little bit every month for cash flow. That's what I'm trying to play with this. I want to keep my cash flow positive. So I got more coming in than going out. So if I take $250 out this month, the, the, will that put me in the negative? Then next year I do the same thing and next year. So I, I'm just messing around with a few things with that. Not that I can't pay it. It's just I'm trying to keep a positive cash flow as much as possible. So it might convince them to do that. This is how my highest single card sold privilege was $50. So Worthburn brought him, not saying it's all Worthburn, but he's saying that it helped him bring it up his high watermark of highest card, $50. So you, you can always try it. Uh, Worthburn's not for everybody. And like he said, he's not big enough yet to pay that expense every month. Exactly. You know, is you got to be big enough to pay for it. Just because you go out and get a scanner, you get a thermal printer, you get all these postcards, you get worth point, doesn't mean you're going to sell postcards to pay for all that. You, you build your business up as you're going. Now, if you want to invest a couple thousand dollars into your business and do all that and get it out of the way, I that's one of the things I recommend if people have that, to do that, is to get it in and get the capital startup cost expensive. Probably take a loss the first year, but after six to eight months, those things are out of the way. Now you can focus on learning what these cards are and learning and stuff like that about the meat and potatoes. You will always continue to learn, but there is a little ramp up. Put your first thousand cards up, learn how to ship them, learn how to sell them, price them, get all that out of the way. Six to eight months, you're going to be winning. You're going to be running with the big dogs. Now, if you don't do some of that, that's fine. You do it a different way. But that's why I always tell people, put their first thousand cards up, buy your first thousand cards, spend the time, and pretty soon you're going to be doing just fine. It, it takes a little bit of commitment, a little rinse and repeat stuff, but it's a, it's a good filler for other things in the store too. Plus it's a little history. You get to learn stuff. And it takes monotony out. So. But thanks, Dan. Let me know if you see anything else with WorthPoint, how the search goes and stuff like that. Any tricks or anything like that on WorthPoint. If anybody's got any tricks about WorthPoint or how they do it, share it with us and I'll bring it on a video and stuff like that. Because I'm still learning a little bit with it too. But I, what I do is I write my title on eBay on my Google Chrome. Then I'll take over to my Microsoft Edge browser and I'll dump that title into eBay to see what's there. And then WorthPoint real quick the title and you got to strip it out a little bit and change up a few things in your title and then I do a search and just see that's what I do I don't go search first and then do my title in eBay I write the title first and I use that as my search criteria so thanks again then rich expressions I'm looking for a good scanner and I'm adding postcards to my store once the settings are set do you have to make any changes based on the type of cards Example, one setting for Chrome, another for Linen, another for Real Photo. So I replied to Rich, no. I have these settings in the Ko-Fi store for the Epson. If you get an Epson printer, I have the 400, the 580, 
and I have the little 60. Now the little 60 is just a portable one. I, if you're doing a lot of postcards, I wouldn't use that. That just gets you through if you're doing you're a hobby and stuff like that. It's like $100. But the 580 is the newest. That's what I have both the 400. And I have settings that I use on mine. Now the 400 and 580 are basically are, are, are the same settings pretty much. The 580 is wireless and it has an LCD screen. The hopper is a little different. It seems like it can hold a little bit more. I like the 580, but those settings, I just set and forget. I haven't changed them. But you can download those for free. It says pay what you want, just put zero in there. So if you get an Epson scanner, just go ahead and grab that document, make those changes, and it works fine. I haven't had anybody come back yet and say those settings need adjustment. I'm waiting for that because I want to test it, but everybody said it's really helped them. So no, you don't have to do that, just set and forget. And a good thing about it, if you have that document, you can always come back to it. I had one person said their scanner went back to factory reset. Well, I'm not for sure what happened. I've never had that happen. But things can happen. And all of a sudden, his card started flying out. 200 DPI. And, he, and I said, there's something changed. And he, and he put out like a real photo in there. It looked grayscale. <clears throat> So he just went and got the document, read the settings, and he was fine. So those will always be out there for people. Or you can, they, you can it's a digital download for zero dollars, free. And uh, a lot of people have said they work. And let us know what scanner you get and how you like it. Gettysburg Battlefields, historic. I learned a little bit more about Gettysburg. I think I should have paid attention in high school. <laughs> But I, I didn't know all the Civil War stuff. We're, we're in the middle of the country, more Abraham Lincoln stuff uh, in Illinois. But check all that and the coupons, and stuff like that. Just be careful with all those. Add up your what you're spending, the percentages, promoted, coupons, sales, mark, you know, all that stuff takes away from the bottom line. Make sure it's in the top before you take it away. Or if you just want to get rid of it, different story. That's all I got for today. I appreciate everybody watching. Here's some more fish. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.